Back when I was working in the office, I could spend hours next to the water cooler and enjoy my free time in the kitchen. Since we moved to remote work, I cannot do anything without moving the mouse. I cannot eat, I cannot sleep, I cannot hug my wife, I cannot have a walk. I have to keep on moving my mouse or else I won't get paid. But now I have discovered the mouse jiggler. I can eat, I can hug my wife without worry. And best of all, I can make money while I sleep. Bye! So a few weeks ago, my friend Boogie, thank you for that wonderful performance in the intro by the way, has approached me and told me about a problem they have at work. And the problem is that the job kind of counts the working hours based on the time they're actively sitting on the computer, even if there's no customers or basically there's nothing to do. So in order to appear online, what they do is they move the mouse all the time, or they found a hack uh, of turning on a YouTube video non-stop just so something will play because that blocks the computer from playing. Um, because it's a work computer, they cannot install any applications or any uh, add-ons. And uh, at some point in the future, they will probably block the YouTube trick as well. And so I decided to try to help Boogie with his problem. And for that, I will use the Permica from SparkFun, which is an Arduino compatible board that is also able to emulate a keyboard or a mouse, among other things. So very easy to code and a perfect tool for that challenge. What we'll make is a device I call the mouse jiggler, which is a device that as long as it's enabled, keeps moving the mouse nonstop. And for the computer, it basically emulates a mouse. Once you actually use the computer and don't need that anymore, you push a button and the device stops emulating and jiggling, so to speak, the mouse. In this video, we'll learn how to make the hardware as well as the software for that gadget. Okay, let's get started. Let's start with the hardware. First, let's 3D print the case and make sure to clean all the supporting material from the case. Prepare all the components including the spark per micro, the LED, the push button, and the 10K resistor. Connect one side of the resistor to the 8 pin and the other side to the LED. Connect the LED to the ground pin. I prefer to have all the connections done with DuPont connectors because it makes it more resilient. Be very careful when soldering the push buttons because you might melt the actual push button. Any exposed connectors should be covered with the heat shrinks. I love heat shrinks. Let's put the push button and make sure to put some hot glue on the LED so it won't move. I recommend putting some hot glue on the USB port because those USB ports tend to break easily. All that's left is to connect the push button to pin 2 and ground and we're done. In order to program the SparkFun Permicro, we need the Arduino ID. Because in its heart, the Permicro is just an Arduino with a few fun advantages. So if you don't have the Arduino ID yet, let's download it now. We go to arduino.cc and download the ID from the While the ID is downloading, we need to add the Permicro board to the Arduino ID. And for that, we need to find the Permicro installation guide. We copy the code, the URL for the board manager, then Arduino preferences and paste that in the board manager URL. We go to Tools, Pause Manager, and add here the Permicro. Tools, Spark Fun, Permicro. Now, a very important thing to remember is that there are two types of the Spark, uh, Spark Fun Permicro. One is uh, the 3.3 volts, and the other is 5 volts. Make sure you choose the right one, because if you choose the wrong one, you can brick the board. 
I did it a few times, you can save the board after that, but it's a lot of hassle and just not worth it. Okay, now that we have that ready, let's start coding the mouse jiggler itself. I won't go over every single line of code, but I will go in highlights over how the code works and what libraries and tools you need. First, we need to add the mouse library. We also will be using the easy button library, which makes it much easier to interact with push buttons. Okay, and first we include the mouse library and we include the easy button library we just loaded. Now we define which pins the button and the LED is connected to. And we define, basically connect the easy button library to the button at the defined pin. In this case, it's pin number two. Then we define a variable to remember if the code is currently running or not. And we will toggle that uh, piece of code with the button. So we also will define a variable to remember how much the mouse has already moved if it's in the process of moving. Arduino code usually has two main blocks. One is called setup and the other one is called loop. So let's add our setup log. In this case, what we do with the setup is we define the LED pin as an output pin, which means we can toggle it on and off. And we begin the mouse library. We also set the debounce time for the button. Now what debounce means is basically when you press the button, the system sees that press has been pretty long, even though for you it might be a few milliseconds. The bounce unifies all of that and triggers the button only once uh, so you won't have multiple button taps in a short period of time. In this case we define it to be 50 milliseconds which means that only once every 50 milliseconds the button push is going to be actually registered. Next we include our loop and what happens in the loop is first we handle the, bu the button uh, push using the easy button library basically everything happens in there and if the button is pressed, then we toggle the state of the running variable. If it was true, now it's false and the other direction. We also toggle the LED to be basically the same as running. If running is true, the LED is going to be high, which means it's going to light up. If running is false, it's going to be low, so it's turned off. If the code is running, we call the function called run loop. Now, what happens in run loop? And loop is where the magic happens. So if the current distance is zero, which means we are not, we finished our last move or didn't start any move before, then we generate a random direction in the X and Y axis. It can be basically from zero to three. And the distance can be between 10 pixels and 800 pixels. Every time the loop runs, we deduct one from the distance and we move the mouse in uh, the relevant direction until we finish the move. And then we'll delay for three milliseconds just so the USB bus won't be overloaded. That whole code is linked in the description below, so feel free to check it out uh, and don't hesitate to ask any questions you might have in the comments. I'll try to answer every single one of them. Once the code has been written, we save the sketch and verify the code, okay? compiled perfectly fine and we can upload it to the Promica. Once it's done uploading, I press the button and the mouse starts moving. And that's it. We have a device which is connected to the USB bus and with a push of a button starts emulating a mouse, moving it around randomly until you push it again and then it stops. That device can basically trick any computer into thinking there's somebody actually sitting there and using the mouse, even if you cannot install any applications and you cannot use any extensions or third-party apps in the computer itself. And it will work with any operating system because it's just a mouse. We could use that same hardware with the same box for other uh, users, for example, to turn it into a mute or unmute button for video calls 
feel free to leave a comment to tell me what other ideas you have for that kind of uh, lead in a button that can emulate keyboards and mouse. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Please subscribe to this channel so you can uh, see other do-it-yourself gadgets like this that I make in the future. See you in the next one.